Hey everybody, welcome back, and hopefully, unless somebody adds something else into Module 1, uh, this is the last uh, lesson in Module 1, so congratulations. We're going to greet customer, and if you've been looking at code a lot, you might notice that words that you know are spelled correctly start to look kind of weird. Uh, same thing happened to me with book when I was doing a library uh, coding exercise when I was first getting started. Um, but anyway, we're going to write a function called greet customer. And given a name, greet customer returns a greeting based on how many times that customer has visited the restaurant. Please refer to the customer data object. Now, if any of your alarm bells are going off because we are about to access a variable outside of a function, inside of that function, uh, that's okay. They should be. And this is not necessarily a great idea to do it this way, and eventually you'll learn why. But for now, let's just consider that it's okay. It's all going to be in the same place, and we're mainly trying to test whether or not you can put conditionals, string concatenation, and object access all kind of in the same function. So, three cases. One, the customer isn't known. Two, the customer is only visited once. And three, the customer has a visits value that's greater than one. Uh, your function should not alter customer data and don't hard code, so nothing like this. So, if we look at customer data, the first thing that we're going to want to do is check if customer is in data object. So we're going to say if customer, I'll just grab that, if customer data at first name is equal to undefined, we know that person has never come to the, uh, what are they at? Coming to a restaurant, I guess? Where are they? Restaurant. Anyway, so this person has never been to the restaurant before. So we're going to go to that case, unknown customer. It says, welcome, is this your first time? By the way that this variable output greet customer thing is set up, we can glean that greet customer is going to return these values. So in case you've been console logging them as part of testing, you're going to want to make sure that you return them in the actual the function. So return, welcome, is this your first time? So that's the first scenario. The second scenario would be that the person is part of the customer, uh, customer data object, but their visits is only equal to one. So if we consider this, let's say something like variable visits object is equal to customer data at first name. What that's essentially going to do, because we've already sorted out the situation where that customer is not part of this customer data object, Visits object is going to be one of these. It's going to be the value inside of customer data at whatever key we asked about. So this entire object is what we're now dealing with when we consider the visits object. So the visits object, we need to check something about it. We'll say if visits object dot visits is equal to one, then the customer has only been there one time and we need to figure out what they want to be, what we want to tell them. So it says, welcome back, Joe. We're glad you liked us the first time. So if we scroll down here, we're going to return this and we've got a couple of issues to sort out. So the first one, we'll make these double quotes because there's no real reason to use single quotes if we've got an apostrophe in there. And now we need to make sure that it doesn't say Joe, but instead says whatever the person's first name is. So I'm going to delete this, add a plus and a plus, end our, uh, the first part of the string there, begin the second part of the string there, and then we want first name in here. So that'll eventually say welcome back. It'll interpolate the first name value into there with an exclamation point, and then it'll say we're glad to see that you liked us the first time. Whenever you get a small situation like this, where it's like it can be difficult to see all the code together, definitely always feel free to jump back to our uh, our replet over here and uh, paste something in there. And by our replet, we literally just mean go to repl uh, dot it, go to the bottom of the page. There'll be this JavaScript thing. You click on that. It'll say, you know, here's what you can work on. If you're me, you're going to go over and you're going to change it to dark because. Well, it turns out it actually has something to do with your eyes. I found that out, and I can't stop telling people because I thought it was just a weird uh, kind of like matrix addict thing that was going on, but it's actually, it has something to do with the way that your eye filters light with a dark background versus a light background, so I feel completely justified. Anyway, let's go back to our tiny little coding box because that'll make it a little trickier. If visits object dot visits is equal to one, at this point here, everything else falls into an else category. 
And the reason that we know that is because we've sorted out the situation where they're not part of it. And we've sorted out the situation where the visits object has a visits value of one. Everything else has a valid visits object, meaning the person has been there, and we know they've been there more than once. So the only thing that we have left to do is interpolate this last one. Welcome back, Carol. So glad to see you again. So as we accidentally inspect the element and then close it, we're going to copy this, go down to our else portion on line 26. We're going to make sure that we return this. We're going to change it to double quotes, and I can't really picture a reason why we're doing that, but I'm going to. I'm going to put a semicolon over here. You'll learn eventually that semicolons are super not necessary in almost every scenario, but they are necessary in a couple scenarios, so until you figure that out, it's a good idea to um, make sure that you put semicolons everywhere that you think there might need to be one. One thing that that'll do is it'll make you very... Uh, It'll, it'll draw your attention to your code in a very specific manner. If you're examining every line for a semicolon, then you're examining every line. And eventually, you'll find out places where semicolons don't need to go, and then you can start to uh, develop a style about when you like to use them and when you don't. So, welcome back. We'll get rid of Carol. We need a plus and a plus. The first part of the string is going to end here. The second part of the string is going to begin there. Put a space there, and we want first name in here. So if we think about it, the first thing we're going to do is check to see if the customer data has a valid entry for whatever first name. If they don't, meaning undefined is the value we get when we check the customer data at first name, we're going to return welcome, is this your first time? Then we're going to create a visits object, and not necessarily a new object, where we're going to point it at whatever the customer data value is for that first name key. And in all cases, the value of that is an object, so we'll call it visits object. We know it's not undefined because this part sorts that out. Then we're going to check the visits value inside of our visit object. So if this is the entire visit object, this is what we're checking, the visits value, which would be here. We check to see if that's equal to 1. If it is, we say, welcome back, first name. We are glad you liked us the first time. Otherwise, we know that they've visited, and we know they visited more than once. So we do the third case, which is return welcome back, first name. So glad to see you again. So now that we've got all of that, I'm actually going to copy all of this and put it into the REPL just so people have like a, you know, at least one place where you can see it. So there it is in all of its glory. Let's move this over a little bit. And just for anybody who needs the solution. We're going to run the tests. We are correct. Excellent work. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.